Hey guys, um, we are going to be making the Ogden True Bias Cami today. Um, I already made it, spoiler, it's awesome. I know I just used Rifle Paper Company fabric, but it's really cute. So I will say that I am in the top of the size range for this. I am technically, I fit into the largest size of this pattern. Um, I did have to do a lot of adjustments to get it to fit. I had to do a full bust adjustment and then I had to add a dart because they're just, it was not fitting right. And I was trying not to add a dart because I wanted it to be simple and kind of, you know, invoke the original, but sometimes you gotta add a dart. And if you have big boobs, chances are more than likely you're going to have to add a dart. Um, now, if I was in, you know, if there was a size above the size that I made, I might have made that versus adding a dart. But um, I also did a sway back adjustment, did some other fitting stuff, and I will show you exactly what I'm doing when I do that. But um, I think it turned out okay. It's not my favorite. Um, this fabric was kind of expensive, so I'm a little bummed that it's not my favorite. I normally have pretty good luck with true bias patterns, but I just think that you can't go as shapeless as this pattern is, um, at least how I would want it to look um, without having a bust art. So that was kind of a bummer. Um, I did it all basically according to the directions but I did a tiny little hand stitch rolled hem just because I didn't want it to be any shorter than it really was. Um, but yeah, if you don't have to do all the fitting stuff that I did, then even quicker if you don't have to sew a bust start. But yeah, I'll see you guys over at the sewing machine. It's too tight right here and it's too tight on the bust. So let's do a full bust adjustment and see if that fixes what's going on. I also added three inches in the length. I just cut on the length and hairline and added three inches. Um, I have a really long torso and I don't particularly like crop styles on me, uh, but I always kind of add two to three inches to most top patterns. So that's just something I do that's pretty standard. And honestly, if I fold this up, I personally might want to add another inch just to be at a length that I like. But let's see if we can fix this pulling situation at the waist and at the bust. So we're gonna start with a full bust adjustment. Now there's not a dart, so I kinda have to mark my bust point and figure that all out. I will link a um, good video for full bust adjustments. I'm not really gonna go into detail on it here, but you're basically just adding kind of width in the bust to accommodate for your uh, boobs. And I'm gonna have a lot of fullness at the bottom of the um, top and I just am going to have to figure out how to deal with that in a minute. But I wanted to just, you know, do one adjustment at a time and see how that ends up. And always make sure to label everything. <laughs> it's much better. And actually, I think at this length, if I turned it up, it would be perfect. So what is going on here? And uh, I'm gonna need a sway back adjustment as well. This is to help the pooling of the fabric above my low back. Um, this one's pretty easy, so I basically just pinned out the amount of fabric until it kind of sit better or right. And I'm going to hinge this pattern piece so that um, the hinge is on the very outer most seam. And I'm gonna mark how much fabric I took out and just kind of tape it and go from there. You can true that line a little bit, but I just kind of eyeball it when I cut it out. And here you can see that it is much better and it fits much better. I could probably use a 
a broad back adjustment, but I'm sick of fitting at this point. I don't love the tenting going on, so I think we're gonna have to add a dart. I was trying to avoid it because I wanted it to be a lazy quick sew, but it's always the simplest stuff that I find I need the most work on my body. Um, here's a little before and after so you can see what the two adjustments I did, what kind of difference they made. It definitely looks like it fits a little better. Um, so for the dart, since I already did the full bust adjustment, I will be just marking my bust point and creating the dart. I did it on my muslin beforehand and it seemed to work out okay, so I just kind of eyeballed it on the pattern. And because we're adding the bust dart, we're going to need to add length back to the hem on the front piece. I just kind of matched them up and added my length back there. Very technical lots of tape. So you can see that fits much flatter in the front. It's not a perfect fit, but there's perfect and there's good enough. Like I said, the back's got some issues, but we'll save that for another day. Um, I am going to cut this out of my pattern. I like cutting my patterns out with a rotary cutter on my cutting mat. I also use my own pattern weights. Uh, make sure you to mark your busts if you are doing a bust art. Uh, but I make my own pattern weights out of rice and scrap fabric. So if you're interested in seeing how I create those, they're just a fun little time killer stash buster project I can create a video. Just let me know and I would be happy to do that. Uh, here's my little self-drafted facing pieces. Uh, we run into a little problem with those later, but I will save that for when we get to it. And I'm looking at this fabric and I'm honestly still kind of bummed that I'm not more in love with the finished product, but it is what it is. You live, you learn. So we are going to stay stitch the neckline, which basically means to put a line of straight stitching on anything that is bias cut. So anything cut on an angle so that it doesn't stretch out. If you accidentally stretched out one of the pieces and then went to go put the facing and the uh, bodice pieces together, they might not fit, which would be tragic. So this is a really important step. Do not skip it. I do it for anything with a bias cut. I'm going to construct this using French seams. Uh, basically what that is, is you take your seam allowance, let's say it's one half, and you divide it by two, and that'll give you your new seam allowance of a quarter of an inch. So you do a quarter of an inch seam on the main seams of the garment, but you do it with the wrong sides of the fabric touching. Traditionally, you would do right sides, but we're gonna start with wrong sides. So you do wrong sides and you do half your seam allowance, then you trim it, and then you're gonna press it really, really well. You're gonna trim it really close. It's gonna feel wrong how close you're trimming it, but you wanna make sure you trim it nice and close and press it really well. That way when you flip it inside out and you're gonna put the um, fabrics right sides together, you're going to restitch, you know, half of your seam allowance again so that all of the seam is enclosed in a little uh, flappy guy. This really only works super well for delicate fabrics. I would not recommend this for a heavy fabric. It would create incredible bulk on the seams. But this is a great option for those of you that don't have a serger or maybe have a serger like me and don't ever want to get it down because it's heavy and it's a pain in the ass to thread. But here you go, you see we're doing wrong sides together for the second pass over those seams. And it creates a little tiny channel or flap and it's got everything enclosed in there and it makes it nice and tidy and you're, it's, a, it's just a really nice way to finish light fabrics. Go ahead and do the other side. Make sure to sew and press your bust starts if you add them. If not, don't do it, obviously. Ryan Little. And then we are going to create our straps and Basically, this is the same as the Patsy party dress. We're going to take a tube, sew it wrong sides together, turn it right side out, press it so that the seam is in the back, and we are going to baste it to the bodice front.
Now the lining I'm not going to sew with French seams just because I'm going to tack it down and you're not really going to see it anyways so I'm not super worried. I'm just going to stitch it up on the side seams like you normally would, right sides together. And then you're going to trim and you're going to press and um, we're also going to hem the lining piece in this step as well. It's much easier to hem it before you attach it. And you can see my little snafu. I didn't accommodate the uh, extra length for my bust heart and my lining, so my lining is just extra short, but it's fine. Because it's short though, I didn't want to press it up more than once. So I pressed it up once and it's the tiniest of tiny hands. And then I'm just gonna do a really, really tiny edge stitch really close to the edge so that it just makes it look nice enough. But it, again, you're not gonna see it once I tack it down. And it actually ended up coming just below my boobs. I think if it would have cut me right through the middle of the bust, it would have been right. another story, but it looks fine and you can't really see it from the outside. But yeah, take your time, turn up a little tiny hem. If you have a longer facing, feel free to do something that is longer. But I just used a straight stitch and straight stitched it all the way around. And then you're gonna pin the bodice and lining wrong sides together and we're gonna, you know, stitch at the neckline. And I actually forgot to film that part, but you are going to make sure that your straps are in the middle of the sandwich and that they're not going to get tangled and caught up in the seam anywhere. You're going to stitch all the way around except the back openings. You can kind of see where the dotted line is where you stitch. That way you can kind of create a, a little mouth or an opening to put the strap in once you flip everything right sides out. And I also pressed it after I stitched it so that does take some time. And I kind of used my seam ripper to um, <laughs> shove the strap in there to make sure it was nice and straight. Uh, I don't know if I prefer this method over just tacking the strap like I did last time. I guess it's technically cleaner, but it didn't really seem that way. Maybe there's another way to do this that I don't know about, but you guys should let me know if that's the case. Um, here I'm hand tacking the side seams together so that the facing doesn't come up. Uh, it's really easy to do. It's just two or three stitches and it's extra easy when you can put it through your little French seam seam. And then once I am done hand tacking, I am going to do an invisible rolled hem by hand, which takes forever, but it is my favorite stitch and it's so soothing and satisfying. I will post a link on how to do this below, but it just, it's amazing and I love it. And it also, since this is kind of already shorter on me, I didn't want to take up any of the length at all. And instead of cutting it longer, I figured I would just, you know, do a little tiny baby hem and that way it looked fine and the invisible rolled hem actually looks really nice on delicate fabrics. So if you aren't familiar with it, I say definitely try it. It does take forever. It took me 40 minutes to hem this top. So definitely put on some YouTube videos and just go to town and have some fun. Overall, as I've discussed before, I like this top. It's not my favorite thing I've ever done. Um, I definitely could have used a broad back adjustment, but like I said, I just got so frustrated with fitting that I was over it by the time that happened. I think it is cute and I really like it. Um, I prefer to wear stuff like this tucked in, even if I'm a goofball with it tucked out. Uh, I think that it's just much more flattering to my figure, but I don't mind it untucked and I think the back, even though it is a little tight, is fine. Again, I don't have to look at the back, so I'm not really worried about it. Thank you so much for joining me. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Um, I look forward to seeing you in the next video and I really appreciate you growing this channel with me.